What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of my experience with and I will be specifically talking about the neon dotty bag today. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. It's a really nice beautiful day in Pennsylvania and it's a great day to speak about this fish. Now its name comes from the beautiful coloration that it exhibits from really really nice oranges, purples and blues and it is a very very personable fish if you get one of these you will notice that it loves to see you when you come in the door approach the tank it will be there waiting for you and it will show off by darting in and out of the rock structure and caves and it just loves to swim around and show off its color and its size so my experience with this fish um, I had another dotty back prior to this one. It was, um, I believe it was an indigo, and it was a really nice fish. But I had seen a neon at the store um, right after I had purchased my indigo, and I really, really fell in love with that fish. And if you go back on my Instagram, you will see that I had posted quite a few pictures of that specific dotty back at the store but I couldn't get it as if you know anything about dotty backs they are in the basslet family and fish of the basslet family tend to be extremely aggressive often fighting to the death now dotty backs are hermaphrodites and it's going to be very hard in sexing them and therefore it's hard to breed them that is because, like I said before, they are extremely aggressive to members of their own kind and to other members in the basslet family. They will often fight to the death over territory. Now, this guy specifically, um, when I introduced him to the tank, he really took to bullying my sand perch right here. And he was constantly chasing him away but the good thing that I noticed was that he never actually nipped at him or aggressively attacked him it was more of a flare and get out of my way gesture and I so I never worried about it now that the tables have turned uh, the uh, sand perch has grown and he now bullies anyone in his way to include my golden head sleeper goby but back to the dotty back, um, any fish with similar body structure, he will attempt to bully and attack to get out of his way until the fish gets established and um, is able to defend itself. So I would suggest that you um, that you put a fish of similar size in with him if you know it has the same body structure. Now I, I found that he never bothered, bothered my golden sleeper goby, he didn't bother my firefish, and he didn't bother my um, long nose hawk. Now those have similar body structures to him and he hasn't bothered those one bit. The only fish that he bothered was the sand perch and he did that for a couple of months until the sand perch had enough of him. But that's pretty much it for this fish. Very nice fish to watch, to observe. And once he uh, understands his place in the tank, he will leave everyone alone and he won't bother a thing. Now introducing a uh, shrimp to the tank, I will let you know that you will need a shrimp as big as he, am, as he is. Um, and don't introduce it to the section of tank which the dotty back has claimed. In my case, it's the right side of my tank. So if any uh, a, a new introductions are made to the tank and they end up over there, he will bother them and bully them away from his territory. Now once that, once that addition learns its, its place in the tank, it will know to stay away from there. And since then, I have had no issues with him. I have a peppermint shrimp, a cleaner shrimp, and a fire shrimp. And he doesn't bother not one of them doesn't bother any other fish in the tank at the moment actually the sand perch has bullied him out of his area and he now sleeps in the rock work 
So if you're curious about getting one, definitely get one. I wouldn't try putting two dotty bags together um, of any color <laughs> or variety um, unless you have a, a big enough tank where they can avoid each other um, majority of the time. Will readily feed on anything. He eats flakes. He comes to the surface for flakes. He also feeds on frozen foods, mice, and brine. And he won't give you a hard time to feed. Just make sure you quarantine them, just like most fish. They are susceptible to a lot of diseases and parasites and fungi. And, you know, this will help in ensuring you have a healthy specimen for your system. But again, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of My Experience With. My name is Alex. Have a good one.